hey, welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. I am in Phoenix, Arizona with one of my amazing friends, Carrie Lake. Guys, we are so excited. Thank you for coming on. I'm so happy to We're be here. We're here in your home state. Yes. And I was just remembering today that I kicked off the new year worshiping with you and thousands of other people in Arizona. I forgot that. So much has happened since, <laughs> yeah. since December 31st. Yeah. But that was the greatest way to ring in the new year. I've, oh. I've rung in the new year every way possible from an at-home party, going to some event where you pay too much money and you dress yeah. up in your cold, yeah. uh, you know, traveling. I've literally done it all in my 54 years. I, I honestly must tell you, that was the most invigorating, perfect way to ring in the new year. Wow, that's and amazing. Especially 2024, where yeah. we know we're gonna need backup. Totally, yeah. We're gonna need God with us, and Amen. so it was really special. That's awesome. Well, it was so good to have you there, and you know, what was really cool about that, I, I, I felt like uh, Arizona was so significant, right? So for us to gather in Arizona and worship at the turn of the new season, it felt like it was like God was putting us on the, the front of the battle, you know? Mm -hmm. and. You know, in the Old Testament, it says, send, send, send Judah first, send the worshipers ahead. I felt like, like that was what we were doing, was we were preparing the way for God to move this year across America. And then we released that album that we recorded that night, and it went number one. Oh, so good. So for a yes. week, it was, you know, listened to number one across the world, which is just very cool. And, and we were listening to great Christian music on the way home from that. Yeah. It, it, we were so invigorated and ready yeah. for whatever is in front of us. Come and on. we don't know what's in front of us. Yeah. You know, a lot of people predict this year is going to be very rough and tumble, right. difficult times ahead. Right. I'm ready. I know that God has put us here. Amen. He's equipped us. Yeah. The very fact that we're here that means that God believes we're equipped for this moment. And so it was just a great way to kind of uh, get us ready to go. Yes. This next year is going to be a challenge and we're ready to go. And Amen. I loved starting the year that way. Thank oh, you for coming. It was so fun. And we're getting ready to worship on a mountain top tonight in Phoenix, which is going to be good. Um, let's start with this. I mean, people, obviously, they know you. They know your, your bold stance. They know your mama bear anointing, if I could call it. Um, how did you meet Jesus? How did this all happen? And then maybe just give us a small picture of what got you into this mess <laughs> that you're in right now? That's a great way to put it. It is kind of a mess, but you know, yeah. we're all in this mess together. Some of us are like actively in it and we're up to our earlobes in the mud. And some of us are just on the sidelines going, I'm gonna step into it, which I encourage everybody to. I think my, my path to uh, my religion started mm. when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm the youngest of nine. My mom was Catholic, my dad was Lutheran. And so we kind of had, at the time, that was like a really different that was almost marrying Catholic and, and Lutheran when my parents got married was right. like marrying somebody from a different planet. Wow. It was frowned upon. Wow. And now you're just, you're happy if your child married somebody who believes in God, you know? Wow. And you hope they, they worship Jesus. Yeah. So I, I got a little bit of Catholic, a little bit of Lutheran. I was confirmed both as a Catholic and a Lutheran, <laughs> which was a little bit confusing, but I've, I've been a woman of faith. I've always been, ever since I was little, I felt a connection to God. I mean, I felt like when I prayed and got down on my knees with my yeah. grandma before mm -hmm. we went to bed, I felt the Holy Spirit. Right. Didn't know what, what it was, but yeah. I felt it. And, and when I was a kid, I, I talk about this in my bio. I put out a bio, a, a bio video where I was about 10 years old mm -hmm. and it was one of those days my, my parents said, go outside and play and don't come back in until it gets dark because we, we want the kids out of the house. And I was laying in our yard, and it was a really big yard in the middle of Iowa, rural part, and I saw a plane going overhead, and I said, someday I'm gonna be on a plane going somewhere. I remember thinking that, and I felt the Holy Spirit. I didn't know it at the time, it was just God telling right. me, wow. you are going to be on a plane, and you're gonna go somewhere. You're going somewhere, and you're gonna do something big. Wow. I didn't know what that meant, but it was, it was like a feeling that came over my wow. whole body, I've had it a few times since then, and all I can say is God was speaking to me. And he wow. said, you're going someplace, you're gonna do something. Well, fast forward, I end up in broadcasting, news broadcasting. I worked really hard, we, didn't, we came from nothing. Mm -hmm. And I ended up in a dream career um, as a news broadcaster in Arizona. During COVID, I had almost my own personal revival in Epiphany wow. that 
we, my, my career was falling, was collapsing, and I was being forced to read lies, and I realized what I'm reading and what I'm putting out is not truthful, and I'm right. not willing to do that. Yeah. And at the same time, I was coming back to my faith. Wow. I was like, I told my husband, who's here in the studio, we got to get our butts back in church. We wow. got to get our whole family back wow. right now. I was yeah. reading the Bible again for the first time. I was in my 50s. I hadn't read it since I was in confirmation at 14. Wow. There's a bit of a difference in life experience from yeah. 14 to 50. And it was like overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, where has this been? Right. Why have I not come to this sooner? Right. And during all of that, deciding to leave my career, reading the news, which I was now recognizing as lies, and during the commercial break, reading the Bible, which I was now going, oh my gosh, this is the truth, this is a lie. And during that time, our church that we belonged to was closed. It was by appointment only right. during COVID. Yeah. And we ended up finding another church, <clears throat> and this was an evangelical church that we walked, I walked into alone the first time I didn't take the family with me. And I just never have felt a closer relationship with Jesus. Wow. With Jesus. Wow. And I got home, I told my husband about it, and I said, you don't have to go. I know this is a mega church. It's kind of foreign to somebody who came up as a Lutheran or Catholic. Right. Yeah. But this is life changing what I'm yeah. experiencing. And my husband the next Sunday put his uh, you know, his suit coat on and his tie on. And we <laughs> went together and the next weekend we brought our kids and wow. it was just it was a life changing moment. Wow. I, I've never felt closer to Jesus and wow. that worship music and boy am I glad that happened. I yeah. think that all of the strife we're going to is really to bring people closer to God. Yeah. I want to save our country, and I think at the end of the day we will, but I want to save souls. Yeah. The point is, what is our salvation? Yeah. And if we are sending and pushing people, not pushing, if people are drawn to God during this time, we're winning. Right. Period. Yeah. Well, it's it was it was interesting because my first experience, you know, with you and getting to do worship at one of those campaign events. Um, before uh, before your election um, for governor here in Arizona, it, I felt like, I mean, I th th there was a, a, an, an awakening, I think people waking up politically like you had during COVID, but I, there was also a spiritual element there, you know, that was very strong, you know, and I don't know, I mean, you, you came and, and spoke and then left, but like we continued to worship and I, it almost felt like I'm like, I closed my eyes and I'm like, this is not a campaign service this, or a campaign event. This is a church service. You know, like I had one of those moments where I was like, this is a church service. Like what? And I could feel God's presence. And then I remember fast forward um, being with you at the Super Bowl in Arizona <laughs> last year. We've had a lot of big moments at, together. At, at halftime. <laughs> And we connected and you were praying about what to do next. And yeah. we were, we missed the whole halftime show, which was good, probably. Well, during the halftime show while we were talking. Right. And, and just enjoying each other's company and praying. And we brought a lot of other people yes. in for prayer, yes. which is so cool when you're around Sean. You're always praying. And, and, <laughs> I mean, honestly, we, there's, we can't pray enough at this point. Yeah, yeah. Somebody goes, you're trending. And I go, wait a minute, Rihanna's out there. The Super Bowl's going on. I'm trending. I didn't realize that apparently I did something that made me trend at the Super Bowl. <laughs> I remember you know what that. I did? I, yeah. I, I sat down but it stood up for the American national anthem. Right. And apparently that was uh, controversial. Oh, but it's, it's all controversial. Yeah. It, yeah, it was ridiculous. If you're not controversial right now, you're probably not doing it. Exactly, that. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, people know that. I mean, yeah. you gotta definitely be but, swimming upstream. But I think upstream. you're right. There was something about our campaign. It, it was so grassroots. It was so of right. the people, for the people, by the people, that when what happened in our election happened, it was painful for me. Yeah. I, I mean, mm -hmm. we worked really, I right. personally worked hard. Yeah. My family, my, mm -hmm. the people on my team worked hard. Right. I felt more for the people. Right. The disservice, the injustice. Inflicted well, and I was, I was actually, uh, the, the, I was actually here uh, like a few days before that um, in, in 2020 and in 2022. It's interesting. I'm always, for some reason, here right before those elections. And I remember thinking, man, the tide's going to turn, da, 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 da. Well, then fast forward, we're at the Super Bowl halftime and you're praying about what to do and how to move forward. And I just, I kept seeing you like in the Senate. I just kept, you know, and I'm there in DC quite yeah. a bit. 
I'm worshiping in those buildings. Like we have another worship thing happening tomorrow night. Love that. And I'm with U.S. senators, sitting U.S. senators, worshiping, and I'm always praying, God, send in like revival people here. Yeah. Like, like remove, and, and I could go into my own issues about, you know, how it's like the, the U.S. Senate has become like a nursing home of <laughs> people that are, but, but I just was like praying, God, send people. And then we have that divine encounter. And then of course, now you're on the road that you're on. Yeah. But I feel like what you're doing is you're, you're, you're also giving so many other people permission, right? It's a yes. season where it's like, People need to push beyond the labels. Like I get labeled everything, a white supremacist, a Christian nationalist, everything. But pushing past the labels brings freedom to so many other people. You That's know, and I right. think that they're emboldened when they see your campaign, what you're doing, and, and they see what's happening in the government. And they see what they're like, we need somebody in there that loves God, that's going to fight mm -hmm. for America, that loves our families, you know. Who's, so Who's not afraid to have terrible things said about them. Yeah. You know what we're, you know, my mom used to say, and my grandma sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Words can hurt. They can sting a little bit, but you can move beyond that. Right. And we have to be willing to have terrible things said about us. I mean, for goodness sakes, Jesus showed us that. Right. Jesus showed us that. And if we're not willing to say, oh, what are we going to tell our grandkids someday, our great grandkids? Right. What, you know, God forbid we don't stand up and we don't fight for this country and we lose it. When our great grandkids say to us, why didn't you fight harder yeah. to save this great country we hear about right. called America? Are you going to say, because they said bad things about me? Oh, they canceled right. me. My social media got, you know, taken away from me. Right. I'm not willing to have that. I want yeah. the conversation to be, thank you, Granny, for right. everything you did to save America. We are so thankful that we still have our freedoms and our lib our God-given freedoms Amen. and our liberties. So, and, and and when somebody stands up and does something courageous, it it's contagious. Yeah. It's contagious. That's the Billy Graham quote: uh, uh, "When a when a brave man takes a stand of courage, it this stiffens the spines of everyone else." Yes, you know? and I'm sensing that there are some spines stiffening up right well, now. Well, and I my prayer is this cycle, and I want to talk about your race and just what you what your vision is and what you see God doing in America but you know my prayer is that we can see these 20 million evangelicals that are sitting on the sidelines you know which is basically what we have right now so yeah. when you break down the data because I did during my congressional run you have 60 percent of 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 evangelicals which is the largest voting block in America right wow yes 60 percent of uh, sixty percent of the eligible ones are the only ones that are registered to vote. Okay. So out of the hundred percent that are that are eligible, only sixty percent of those are are registered. Okay? So forty percent are non not registered. Yeah, and then fifty percent of that sixty percent are the only ones that vote oh, in a presidential election. We got to change that. So you have the largest voting block in America. You have, I mean, you have people whining about the country and the way it's going and what's happening with the border and what's happening with you know, uh, with the economy and what, you know, but yet at the same time, inflation, all these issues, but yet they're not even engaging in the process to vote. And so what is your encouragement to those people, hopefully from this? <laughs> okay. I mean, you can, you can go real basic and say your life was better four or five years ago than it is now, but let's yeah. look at this country. There's not many, there's no other country like this one where we do have God given liberties and freedoms. Um, and I think I just said it, I, we're going to have, we're, we're leaving a country for our children and grandchildren. This is a country that still, even though the first amendment is hanging by a thread, right. free religious freedom, there's no other country like this. And we have to have that. And it's time for us to stand up and be strong. And I think as Christians, we have a duty to do that. The Bible calls for us to do that. And we need to get political. We need to speak out. If that means we're persecuted, I think we have a pretty good example of somebody who was persecuted. Mm. And I think this is the time to do that. So I just, I, I don't know if I have the magic words other than imploring for people for the sake of our country that I believe God had a hand in creating. You know, those 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence, the fear they must have faced, the 
You yeah. know, they didn't have social media. It was not like they were on a text thread with everybody going, yeah, we're going to yeah. sign the declaration tomorrow yeah. and we've got yeah, an get army. Get hype, get hype. <laughs> yeah, you didn't even know if anybody was with you. Right. You were looking at your family, your children, your wife, and saying, I got to do something to right. make sure that we are not living under this tyranny. And so I, I don't think that those men were placed in this great nation by accident. And I don't believe we were either. And I know that we're at a moment, a pivotal moment, where we either keep this country and the great freedoms, the God-given freedoms we have, or we lose it. Yeah. And as Reagan said, we are plummeting <clears throat> into a thousand years of darkness. So I'm willing to do anything, work as hard as yeah. I can, give more, more, more. And I just ask that, do the simple thing, register to vote and vote. And you might be one of those people who says, I don't know, I've watched the elections the last few rounds and they're not very good, they're not very um, secure. I met somebody in Texas in the last couple of weeks, 75 year old man, he said, Carrie, I've pretty much given up, I wasn't gonna vote again. I've watched too many elections just be the rug pulled out from underneath us, mm -hmm. too much corruption. Right. And you just gave me hope to get up and fight again. That's good. I think we have about eight months and I'm not a you know, doomsdayer, yeah. But I really think we have about eight yeah. months to save our country. And I just ask that everybody in this next eight months yeah. do everything you can. Yeah. And I don't think it's asking too much to get registered to vote. If you need help, go to carrylake.com. At the top, it says register to vote. You can do that. I love that. I, I feel like, the to me, I feel like the word for this year, I mean, obviously zeal is something, zeal for the house of the Lord is something we're meditating on. But also this, this idea of the joyful warrior, right? Yes. Because I know for me... Sometimes I get on these these conservative, you know, channels and it's just rah, 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 it's just all the time you're banging your head against the wall. And I'm like, hold on. God's in a good mood and he's on the throne and he has a plan for us. Yes. Right. So how do we stay in that posture? This is one of my questions to you. How do we stay in that posture of the optimism of heaven? I guess you could call it right, because heaven knows no defeat. Mm -hmm. Like all heaven knows is the will of God, it's perfect, it's going to happen. How do we carry that optimistic perspective? How does that filter into the way that we fight for America? I get asked, or I get told a lot, you give me hope, you, give, yeah. you make me feel like we're gonna get through this. And that's because I truly, with 100% of my being, believe that, because I believe that God is truly in charge, he's in control. And so I, any, if I can give people hope, that's great, but we also have to do the work. God is using us to do his work here on earth, and we're going to do that for him. I just believe that at the end of the day, we win this. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't have the magic words to tell you other than if you are a person of faith, then you must already know that. You already know that. And we have to do every step we can while we're here to make sure that we are making the steps needed for God's plan on earth to, to come to fruition. And so I, I don't necessarily have all the great words. I love zeal. One thing I do tell people is when you get wrapped up in the negativity of what's happening, because, you know, you read the news, you, if you read right. the news, you go, oh my gosh, how can it get much worse? <clears throat> right. I really, every day when I'm in the middle of all of this insanity and it does feel insane, I say, thank God I'm here. How, that, that, that our heavenly father yes. thinks high enough of us, highly enough of us to put us here at this moment. Take all of this in, look at it from a perspective of not like being in the mud, but stepping back and looking at it from a different perspective and saying that you are here for this historic moment is Come so on. amazing. Come on. You know, I, I wonder sometimes what our founding fathers felt. Were they awake at three? In, I'm sure they were awake at three in the morning. They were fighting probably. They were fighting the British at three in the morning. Yeah. But they didn't realize from a different perspective of looking at it from right. a historical perspective, how special they were. Right. They were more caught up in the realness of the pain and the suffering and the difficulty. So I try to pull back the pain, suffering and difficulty, wash that away and say, I'm so glad I'm part of a right. historic moment Amen. and that God placed us here for this yeah. moment. We're so, no, I, we're so I, lucky and, we're, and I'm glad to be we, here. Yeah, and you're, you're totally right. I, I, I wrote this, I was looking for something that I wrote earlier when you were talking but I wrote earlier today on Twitter, we can't afford to live lives where we underestimate God and overestimate evil. 
That's a great And line. I feel yes. like in America right now, that's the, and this is why I love worship so much, right? We're going to 22 more capitals, right? We've, we've already done 28. So amazing. We got 22 more capitals and we're ending in Washington, D.C. nine days before the election on the National Mall, the biggest worship event in the nation's capital will be happening. Let us worship October 25th, so mark it down, or 26th, so That's, mark it down. Yeah. But we cannot afford to live lives where we underestimate God and overestimate evil. And I feel like we're, because of the, these, all these court cases and this corruption and these indictments and all yeah. this stuff, we're overwhelmed by corruption and evil. And, and it's almost like we're more in tune with that than we are God's ability to overcome that. You know, Ooh, and I, 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 I feel like that's what we need to tap into right now in America. And while I'm on that thread, I hear some speaking about hope. Here's some hope for you. I did some deep diving with my D.C. people that okay. run all the polls. OK, this is a poll you have not seen. This is a poll that no one's seen. OK, this is a poll from 10 days ago. That's an etern- in- internal poll on your race. Um, and right now, I mean, this is super reliable, Okay. right? This, well, this the, is, yeah, that people don't get the internal polling is the good stuff. No, the, the and stuff. this is internal polling. That's not public stuff. And it, and it helps determine where these guys put their money. Yeah. And these are guys that put their money places. So okay. they said, cause I asked them, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do this, uh, interview with Carrie. You got to give me the update. They're okay. like, all right, you can tell her this, but. Okay. We're I'm not bra- making I'm it public. Myself. So here, here, here we go. So here it is on your poll. You got 42%. Uh, who's the guy? Gale- Gale- Gallego. Gallego is 31 and Cinema's at 17. Whoa. So they have you right now 11 points up, which is huge. I believe that. You know, a lot of the polls, a lot of pollsters now, because we've been burned in elections, you know, going into the governor's race, I was 10 and 12 points up. Right. And then the pollsters go, you know, we saw what happened in Arizona. They right. shut down election day, for goodness right. sake. So... The pollsters then get skittish and they go, well, we know she's 10 points up. Let's just say she's two points up because we don't want to look like right. we're wrong. Right. I am I care about what the voters believe and what the voters are going to do and what, what the voters are supporting. And I know, I feel it. I'm with them every day. They're with us. Yeah. They're with President Trump because they know that we're fighting for America and we have to continue fighting. The, the devil is working. Evil is working. When Those stolen elections were meant to make us feel like we have been beat down and there's no hope and there right. is we cannot we cannot sit here feeling wounded and not step forward yeah. and get active again i love it we can't let our country go because we got worried about the right. elections we're going to yeah. do some things there's going to be some changes here and there not enough obviously we want fair elections we want pure parity pure fairness we don't have that yet but people are showing up in droves. If you're looking at and following politics, you're following the, the caucuses and the primaries. Yeah. And what we're learning about that is the record, mind-blowing, record-setting turnout that we're seeing in President Trump's primaries. That is a sign of things to come in this next election. Right. But we can't give up. My dad was a football coach. He said the only way to truly, for sure, fail is to quit. Yeah. And so there's no quit in us. Yeah. And we already know what the results are, that God is in, in, in charge, yeah. God is in control, and God wins. Yeah, amen. It's on his timing. Amen. And when you know that, then you're almost ashamed if you don't respect that and believe that. If amen. you If you have a weak moment, just remember that. Yeah, I love that. And I, I one of the last things um, Elijah did before he died, um, when he was cranky and ready to go, <laughs> and he was angry because the prophet did not strike the ground enough times. And if you remember that story, it was like, strike the ground, strike the ground. Well, you should have struck it more than three times, four times and five times and six times. And, and I feel like that, that is a, that's a reminder to us. And, and I love your story because it's like, we're not quitting. We're not quitting. Yep, no. We're going to keep striking. You know, for us, we're going to keep going to capitals. We're going to keep gathering to worship. We're about to gather on a mountainside in Phoenix. We're not going to allow the corruptions and the scandals and the and the and the and the darkness dictate our future you right. know we're going to keep fighting so i would love it some of the powerful people who've been part of some of the corruption are starting to capitulate yeah we're seeing it oh yeah if you're paying attention we're seeing it they oh, yeah. real they see what's coming yeah and they're starting to say we're either going to be part of the solution to solving our problems in right. america right. and restoring 
uh, what is true and good and moral, or right. we're going to be on the wrong side of history. I'm starting to feel like people who've not been with the right side of history are starting to go, oops, we better come around. Hey, Amen. I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I, it's, it's, I, I, and, and along with that is the massive level of exposing which we, yes. which we want to continue to happen. I will say this, though, if I may. Um, I am working to bring people together. I know that there's a tendency when we've been done wrong to say, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. you're out and you're out for good. Yeah. I, I do believe in forgiveness. And yeah. when, when we win, I believe we'll, we will be victorious right. with people. We're going to need Americans to come on board. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I mean, there's some people who won't. They won't. Yeah. They're just too far gone. But those people who maybe haven't been with us all along, who are recognizing things are changing, I want to get on board. Now, that doesn't mean you have to bring them on your inner circle of trust. Right. Yeah. But I want to bring Americans together. I don't want to be at um, my fellow Americans' throats. Yeah. The media is doing everything they can right. to divide us, make us angry, right. make us afraid, isolated. Right. And a big part of the problem has been the media lying right. to us. Lying well, to and, the, and, the, and the enemy, I mean, that, that's his job. His job is to bring dissension, the accuser of the brethren. I mean, this is what he yeah. does. This is how he works. So and, I want to bring people together. We do need to see justice for some of the crimes committed. Yeah. But for those who haven't committed crimes, who just have been maybe opposed to us, opposed to America and our freedoms and liberties and what's right and moral, I do want to bring people together. Yeah. I really mean that, and I think we can. Yeah. Together, we we're so much to. more powerful. I think we have to. Yeah. And I love that. That was one of the things I love that, that Trump has been saying lately is, you know, my vengeance is going to be success, that's which right. I think that's, that's, that's the sweet spot right there. Hey, before we end, would you, we always have a prayer that's, that's sent to love people it. as they're listening. Would you pray us out? I would. We prayed us in before. <laughs> yes. Um, my prayers aren't as good as yours, but I'm oh, just, your prayers are awesome! I'm just going to pray uh, a humble prayer of just of gratitude, and yes. I, and sometimes, Almighty God, we don't say thank you enough, and I think the greatest prayer is just a thank you, thank you for placing us here at this moment. We know that when we're here, we feel pain, we feel struggle, we worry, but when we cease to worry and we put our faith in you, which is where it lies, we know that you will get us through. I have faith in you, Sean does, I know everyone listening does, and just make sure you strengthen that for us so that when we have those dark moments, we remember you are with us, your, shoulder, your hand is on our shoulder, you had a hand in creating this great nation, and we are filled with gladness that you placed us here at this moment. You, Give us everything Jesus. we need, and we ask for all of, the, all of your grace, all of your blessings, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, and hey listen, go support Carrie, Get behind her campaign. Let's pray her in as the next amazing senator from Arizona. We would Thank love that. You so Bless much. you guys. Thanks for listening. God bless you. God bless.